Ever wondered how a cyber attacker plans and executes a data breach? In the vast landscape of the digital world, cybersecurity stands as a beacon, safeguarding our precious data from the clutches of cyber criminals. This sphere is not just about thwarting attacks, but understanding the attacker's strategy. One such strategy is the concept of the cyber kill chain, a series of steps cyber attackers follow to infiltrate and exploit a system. Stay tuned as we unravel the steps of the cyber kill chain. The cyber kill chain, a term coined by Lockheed Martin, is a model to understand and tackle cyber attacks. It's essentially a roadmap that helps us visualize the stages of a cyber attack from the perspective of an attacker. Think of it like a blueprint of a heist, but in this case the loot is often data and the vault is a network or a system. The cyber kill chain breaks down the attack into seven stages, reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and actions on objectives. These stages represent the sequence of events an attacker goes through to achieve their goal. Whether it's stealing sensitive information, disrupting a service, or causing damage to infrastructure, understanding this chain gives us valuable insight into the attacker's methods, helping us to anticipate their moves, strengthen our defenses, and ultimately, disrupt their operations. Now that we've introduced the concept, it's time to delve deeper into each step. The first step in the cyber kill chain is reconnaissance. This is where the attacker becomes a detective of sorts, meticulously gathering and analyzing information about their target. It's a phase of careful observation, of quietly piecing together the puzzle that is the potential victim's digital footprint. Reconnaissance can be passive or active. In passive reconnaissance, attackers gather information without directly interacting with the target. They might sift through public databases, social media profiles, or online forums. Active reconnaissance, on the other hand, involves direct interaction with the target system, perhaps through network probing or port scanning. The goal here is to identify vulnerabilities that can be exploited later. These could be unpatched software, weak passwords, or unsuspecting employees who might fall for a phishing scam. It's a silent phase, often going unnoticed until it's too late. Once the attacker has enough information, they move on to the next step. After gathering information, attackers proceed to weaponization and delivery. This stage is where the hackers craft their destructive tools. Think of it like a blacksmith forging a sword, only this sword is made up of malicious codes and software. This weapon, often a type of malware, is custom designed to exploit the vulnerabilities the hackers found during their reconnaissance. The delivery, on the other hand, is all about sneaking this weapon into the victim's system. It could be as simple as a disguised email attachment, or as complex as a hidden code in a website. The aim is to trick the user into activating the malware themselves, bypassing the need to crack any security measures. It's a bit like a Trojan horse, pretending to be harmless while secretly carrying a destructive payload. The attackers wait patiently, their weapon lying dormant until the unsuspecting user lets it in. Upon successful delivery, the next phase of the attack begins. With the malware delivered, the attacker now moves on to exploitation and installation. This stage is where the attacker's true skill shines through. Here, they exploit security loopholes and vulnerabilities within the target system. These vulnerabilities could be as simple as outdated software, or as complex as unguarded backdoors in the system's coding. The attacker uses these weak points to inject the malicious code. Once inside, the malware is installed. This could be a Trojan horse, a worm, a ransomware, or any other form of malicious software. The aim is to gain a foothold within the system, a base from which to launch further attacks. The malware usually installs itself in such a way that it can survive system reboots ensuring its longevity. It may also disguise itself as a legitimate system process to avoid detection. With the malware installed, the attacker is ready to take control. The final steps in the cyber kill chain are command and control, and actions on objectives. Once attackers have successfully infiltrated a system, they move to establish command and control. This phase is a critical juncture, 
It's where the attacker establishes a secure and often disguised communication channel back to their own servers. Often these channels are encrypted, making detection and disruption more difficult. It's like the attacker has their own secret tunnel in and out of the system. Once this command and control channel is established, attackers have the freedom to carry out their objectives. These can vary widely, depending on the attacker's goals. They might be after sensitive data, such as credit card numbers or intellectual property. Perhaps they intend to disrupt the victim's operations, or maybe they're planting a bug that will allow them to return at a later date. However, remember that this isn't a one-size-fits-all process. Some attackers may skip the command and control phase altogether, opting instead to carry out their objectives as quickly as possible to avoid detection. Others might linger, quietly collecting data or monitoring activity for weeks or even months. Regardless of the specifics, the final step in the cyber kill chain always involves the attacker achieving their objectives. Whether they're stealing data, causing disruption or laying the groundwork for future attacks, this is the stage where the attacker's intent becomes action. With the objectives achieved, the cyber kill chain is complete. Understanding the cyber kill chain gives us a systematic approach to tackle cyber threats. It's like a roadmap, guiding us through the complex labyrinth of cyber defense. We began with reconnaissance, where threat actors gather information about their targets. Then we moved on to weaponization and delivery, where these actors create and send malicious payloads to potential victims. In our journey, we explored exploitation and installation, where vulnerabilities are exploited and malware installed. Finally, we delved into command and control and actions on objectives, where attackers seize control and achieve their malicious goals. Each stage of the cyber kill chain provides a unique opportunity for defense, allowing us to intervene and stop an attack before it reaches its end goal. By understanding this process, we can anticipate potential threats, strengthen our defenses, and make it much harder for attackers to succeed. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about cyber threats, the better we can protect ourselves.